All right, let's just jump here. Hey, uh, by, by God's grace, um, this has been another record-breaking summer for community. And um, we just continued, um, again, by God's grace, help more and more people find their way back to God than ever before. And uh, just kind of was looking at some numbers, too, and just let you kind of know what's going on. We're, we're now, this past year, we're looking at averaging close to 6,000 uh, 6, people, 5,874. It's about a 7% increase, which, I mean, just is an awesome, awesome thing. And when we're continually, I mean, People come up and I hear, you know, via email or text or some other way or Facebook, hey, I'm here for the first time, here for the third time, and it's changing my life. Um, I got, I got this, this particular email. Uh, this was actually through Facebook. So this, hi, Dave. I was going to write you, write you later, but I thought it's now or never. I honestly cannot tell you how much your church community has changed my life. Seeing all the people that now welcome me means everything to me. The hugs I receive mean the world to me. I've been, through, I've been through hell with my failing marriage these past few years. I know for a fact that I would not be giving my marriage a chance if it weren't for a community. It has not only changed my marriage, it's changed me too. I will forever go forward being a better person. Every week I learn something. Every week I feel something. The Big Idea series are genius and so creative. They've applied to me in so many ways, more than I can explain. And the music, oh, I love the music. Thank you, and thank you for helping me find my way back to God. Was that awesome? I'll tell you what, just turn to somebody near you and go, hey, you are making that happen. Just point and go, like, you are making that happen. All right? Find color, you are making that happen. <laughs> and here's, here's the thing, too. I want you to understand this. This is not something that's just happening here in the Chicagoland area. But, but the, I wish I had time to really kind of unpack the impact that we're now starting to have just globally. Um, Patrick O'Connell, I don't think Patrick's back. That's Patrick's wife, Nancy. Very, <laughs> that's good. You should be cheering for him. And Patrick's our, our new thing. When's Patrick get back? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. He was, a, he was in Thailand, trained a bunch of church planners, and um, there's just some awesome things. I think it was Thursday, I got a text from, from Patrick. Hopefully he was texting you too, Nancy. Um, and he says this, he said, hey Dave, we're leaving the camp at Hong Kai here today. We had three great days of training. These leaders here in Thailand are superheroes. The Lao leaders are incredible and deeply motivated to start new things. Check this out, they have committed to plant 200 new churches in the next two years. This is a place where poverty and communism remain a significant bear. It's been a great trip, and we have a real possibility of a new movement in Thailand. Talk to you soon, Patrick. Is that awesome? That is awesome. I'll tell you what, do me a favor again. Turn to somebody near you and go, hey, you are making that happen. You are making that, you are making that happen. And I, I, I really do. I hope you always feel this way, like that I, the way I do. I mean, I, I just feel extraordinarily grateful because I believe for, for reasons that we don't fully understand, way beyond our own gifting, way beyond our own obedience, God is just being in, incredibly kind by using us for the mission. So I'll tell you what, there's a couple things I want to spend our time on this morning that are just around the corner. Um, the first one is coming up uh, October 4th. Anybody know what happens on October 4th? Celebration generosity. Celebration generosity, that's right. And if you were at any of our locations last week, you probably heard us tell the story of how Celebration Generosity got started. I mean, the whole thing was birthed, really in the middle of a financial crunch, was birthed out of a day of prayer and fasting. And out of that day of prayer and fasting, and you heard the story, we felt like God clearly spoke and said, you know what, instead of pulling things back, we feel like you need to be more generous. And I remember talking to some other pastors in the area, I mean, who just looked at me and said, that sounds crazy, not in the spot you're in right now. And we just decided to kind of take a week and we're going to give it all away. And so every year now, the first weekend of the year, which is going to be October 4th, the first weekend of our fiscal year, rather than kind of keeping it for ourselves, going, okay, how can we get ahead in this next fiscal year? We just kind of, we give it all away. And as you know, we've given away more than three and a half million, and this is going to be our eighth year. I think we're going to go over the $4 million mark uh, this year in a big, big, big way. And I think that's awesome. Um, one of the things I think that's, it, that's also, I, I think there's going to be a day in the not too distant future when we're going to do a celebration of generosity and it's gonna be a day where we give away a million dollars in a single weekend. I mean, it's just almost unfathomable, but I mean, that's, that's something that's not too distant future for us. So a couple of things I'd love for you to think about as leaders, okay? One is, um, we got this pre-celebration generosity show that's coming up, Eric Bramble's gonna be doing that, so it'll be a lot of fun, and I think, Eric, can I, can I announce you? You got a guest, right? For the 25th, okay, for the 25th. One of the, on, one, on the night of the 25th, it's gonna be two different nights, um, Steve Cochran, Steve Cochran, who's, uh, anybody listen to Steve Cochran on WGN? 
Steve's a WGN host, uh, DJ, uh, kind of a local celebrity, and he actually is a community attender, but he's agreed he's going to be pairing up with Eric. So, I mean, if you've got Steve Cochran and Eric Bramlett, what more could you want, right? So if you haven't got your tickets, get your tickets, and then tell some other people, hey, i got a ticket, I plan on going this, join me, all right? Make sure you do that. But here's the other thing, too. I want to challenge you on October, on October 4th, okay? And there's, 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 I have, there's no selfish gain in this, but give your largest gift that weekend. Would you consider doing that? I mean, the largest gift that you've given, maybe this whole calendar year, give it on October 4th. Let's just make that kind of a statement about who we are as a church. We're that kind of a generous church. And, 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 and do me a favor with this, too. Here's the thing. As a leader, okay, staff and other leaders, I would actually and tell people that. Tell people, yeah, this October 4th, I am planning to give. You don't have to tell them how much if you don't want. Just tell them, I am planning to give my largest gift of the year. That's how much I believe in this. All right? I think we need to kind of lead in that way. I think there's a very simple leadership principle that says this. You can't take people where you are not willing to go. You cannot take people where you are not willing to go. And if we want to do something really significant through these teams, then we have to go there first as leaders. It's that, it's that, 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 that important. All right? Before we get to Celebration Generosity, we do have another big day coming up, and it's next Sunday on September 20th, which is Show Up Sunday. And um, we are so excited about Show Up Sunday. Um, I think this may be a hallmark weekend where we see more people take the first steps on finding their way back to God than maybe any other weekend in the history of our church. Um, how many of you got in on the, uh, the, the dance party, the different videos that came around to the different campuses? Yeah? Did you get on that? Good time? How many of you would like to see what we actually came up with as a result of all those? Yeah? Eh, I don't know. That was kind of, uh, I don't know. Yeah? All right. Well, we, have, we have the world premiere of Show Up Sunday with me, and, and it's going to be showing at all the campuses tomorrow, but we want to give you leaders a sneak preview. I literally have no idea, because I, I, this is the first time I've seen this. I guess that's why it's the world premiere. So here we go. Check it out. All right, show up Sunday. Um, I, I want to start with a story, and um, it's a story I shared with some of our Yellow Box leaders, but I think maybe this is, uh, for our purposes today, it's worth retelling. Um, this is probably, oh, probably been about uh, six, seven weeks ago. There was, there was an ambulance in our, came, came through our neighborhood, and it was, and it was outside of uh, Lou and Louise's home. And Lou and Louise, if this is my house, and Lou and Lee, Louise live over here. And Lou and Louise are this... Uh, beautiful couple who are almost 90 years old, uh, who've been married close to, close to 60 years. Just kind of a really amazing couple. And ever since we started doing these blessed practices, you know, the begin with prayer, listen, eat, serve, share your story. We've been doing block parties and Halloween parties and other things. And we've gotten to know our neighbors well better, way better than we ever did before. And I've gotten to know Lou and Louise. And I mean, even though they're close to 90, married 60, I mean, just sharp as a tack, just sharp as they can be. And uh, when I saw the ambulance pull in front of Lou and Louise's house, um, I was a little concerned. And uh, so I went outside, went across the street, and then I kind of huddled with a number of other neighbors, and, um, and we saw them pulling someone out on a stretcher, kind of through the garage, and then towards the ambulance. And it was Lou. And I, have you ever seen uh, like a football game, a football game where you know, a player gets injured, when the player gets injured, and maybe it's a, a bad injury, they, they bring the stretcher out on the field, and they'll put the player out on the field, and after they put the player on the field, as they're pulling him off, typically, I mean, there's kind of a, if, if he's going to be okay, if he feels like he's going to be okay, and he's conscious, usually he gives kind of one of these to the crowd, right? Kind of gives a thumbs up and waves, like, I'm going to be okay, and kind of maybe looks for his family, that kind of stuff. Well, so Lou's coming out of, out of the garage on the stretcher towards the ambulance. We're all kind of concerned. And out of the corner of his eye, you can tell that he kind of sees all of us standing there. And 90-year-old Lou, he leans over, sits up, looks at us, and does this. <laughs> like it's going to be okay. And uh, they took him off, and uh, he's back, and he, he is doing okay. But I walked back across the street. As I walked back across the street, uh, my next-door neighbor, Gusta, stopped me. And, and, and Gusta and her husband, Bob, are... Um, out of all the people in the neighborhood, um, they're, they're, they're very timid. They're kind of quiet. They're really introvert kind of people. And while we have gotten to know almost all of our neighbors, we haven't gotten to know Bob and Gusta nearly, nearly as well. But, but Gusta stopped me as I was coming back across the street, and she, she just said, uh, hey, um, is Lou going to be okay? And I told her kind of the story I just told you about how, you know, Lou gave us all the thumbs up and, and that, yeah, he's going to be fine. And uh, then right on the dime, Gusta changed the subject. 
She said, um, you know, I meant to tell you, Bob has cancer. And, uh, and, and he's not doing well. And, uh, I mean, Bob and Goose live, I mean, literally, this is my house. They live right next door. And I didn't know. Not until that moment. And while we're standing there on the sidewalk, then she says, she said, you're a pastor, right, Dave? I said, yeah, I, I sure am. And she said, would you come over and talk to Bob? I, I, think, I think he has some questions about God that he'd like to ask you. I, I, I said, well, of course. So, so later on that day, I went next door, and I sat down with Bob. And probably other than the time that I, uh, I borrowed his snowblower, this would be by far the longest conversation I'd have with Bob. We both sat on the couch while Augusta and her brother-in-law and sister sat across the family room from us. And they all kind of listened in. And Bob started talking to me, and he said, you know, um, I got two grandkids that are due. Two of my kids are expecting kids. One of them uh, this month, and another one uh, three months from now. The doctors say I should be around for the first one, but they're not sure about the second one three months from now, if I'll get to see that baby born. And um, I, I had no idea that the prognosis was that dire. So we talked a little longer, and then we began to get into spiritual things, and I asked him if he believed in God, and, and, and he assured me that he did. In fact, he went on and he said, you know what? I have a great wife. I have a terrific family. I've had a successful career, and I, I do. I believe all those things were a blessing from God. And then we began to move a little further into the conversation. I began to explain and talk about Jesus. And quite honestly, I think there were, there were some parts he seemed to get and there are other parts I don't know if they actually fully connected. And, and he was, at that point, he said he was kind of too weak to really concentrate and read. And I actually, so I got, actually had an audio, an audio copy of the book John and I wrote, Finding Your Way Back to God. So I gave him an audio copy so he could just kind of listen to someone read it to him. And the conversation kind of, I could sense that he was starting to get tired. And so I promised to come back the next week, continue our conversation. And I said, you know, Bob, would you like to, would you like to pray? And very politely, he said, no, nah, I don't think I want to pray. But then I said, well, would you like for me to pray? And he said, yeah, if you want to pray, go ahead. And so I prayed. What I didn't know was that that would be the last conversation that I would have with Bob. Um, it was less than a week later. I was out of town for a couple of days, and when I got back, I think it was like five days later, that Gusta texts Sue, and says, Sue, I just wanted you to know that Bob passed away. As I reflected on that experience, a particular verse that's kind of been a favorite of mine really just stuck in my head and in my heart and my mind, kind of Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, and it says this. It says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. What I didn't know was that that would be the very last conversation I would have with my next door neighbor, Bob. And I mean, I knew that he had what I thought was a few months or at least several weeks, but I never thought that would, I, it just didn't occur to me for some reason ever that that would. I mean, he seemed sick, yes, but I had no idea that that would be the last conversation. And, and here's the thing, and I'll just be real honest with you. There's part of me that feels like in that moment, I didn't fully make the most, as it says there, that Ephesians, the most of that opportunity. And yeah, he said, we talked about this, he said, he said he believed in God, and I'm hopeful he had the beginnings of a relationship with God. But you know what? Here's the thing. If I had that to do over again, if I had the whole thing to do over again, I would have talked a lot more about Jesus. And if I had the whole run to do over again, I just, I mean, in retrospect, you know, I think I would have been a lot more intentional about inviting and including my neighbor, Bob. I just didn't know. And I guess we never know for sure. And here's, here's what I thought maybe would be important for us to, to kind of go there this morning. 
Every once in a while, I think it's important for us to remember why this mission of helping people find their way back to God is so important. Here's why it's so important. Yes, it is. It is about life and life to its fullest. And we talk a lot about that on the weekend, John 10, 10, that Jesus came to give you life, and he wants you to give you life to the fullest, right? Amen? But the other thing is it's also about eternal life. It's, a, it's about heaven and hell. It's about eternity, about John 3, 16, everlasting life. And so I guess what I want you to think about, I'd love for you to just think about who are the people that are close to you? Think about the people that in your own life that are relationally close, family members or friends, maybe vocationally close, coworkers, maybe people that work on the same floor, or maybe even the next cubicle. People, just think about the people that are in close proximity, that are maybe right in your neighborhood or maybe even literally right next door. And maybe the truth is you don't know where they are in their relationship with God. And, and, and the reason that God put you in such close, close proximity to them is because he wants you to make the most of every opportunity. And I, I think it's particularly important for us, and I stress this every time we get together as leaders. As leaders, if we don't feel an urgency about this, nobody will. As leaders, we set the spiritual temperature for the rest of the church. If we are not red hot, fired up about making the most of every opportunity, nobody else will. And so I guess that's why I mean like this particular this Sunday that's coming up on September 20th. I think it's just it's a perfect opportunity. It's a perfect excuse for you to make the most of every, every opportunity with a friend or a, or, or a neighbor or maybe a classmate or a coworker, a family member. And so I would give the challenge, I mean, children, kids, city people, do everything you can to make that September 20th. I know we, we're all focused on that, but do everything you can because we're going to have a whole bunch of kids and families there for the first time that it's so awesome that they want to drag their, their, their parents back the next week instead of the, kids drag, the parents dragging them there. Student leaders, let's do everything we can. I mean, where, where in the world, okay, do you see it happen where the students are so excited, so fired up about the church and the mission that then the parents start coming because they have to check this thing out. That's what we want. Those of you involved in first impressions, make, make sure from the moment they step on whatever location, whatever campus you're on, from the moment they step on that site to the time they leave, that they, they feel welcome, they feel, they feel invited, they, they feel involved, they feel wanted, they feel loved. And I'll, I'll tell you, creative team, I know we've already put a ton of energy in what's going to happen that weekend. But do everything you possibly can. I mean, practice twice as hard. Pray twice as much. So that when you, so when you get on whatever stage, whatever platform it is in front of, you know, whether it's hundreds or thousands, when you get in front of those folks that you're ready going like, no, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything I can to help those people find their way back to God. And I, I know for myself and, and Tammy and other people that are part of the teaching team, we're putting, we're putting together a talk that I, I promise we're going to do the very best we can to make sure it connects with people's hearts and minds. Now, here's the thing. Some of you know this. On September 20th, we're starting a brand new series called Transform. I love this series. And basically, it puts it out there. And I think everybody kind of will resonate with this. You all have a choice. Everybody has a choice. Either we conform, we conform to everything around us, or we're going to be transformed into the very best that we can be through God's grace. And we're going to do this five-week series. We're talking about five different key areas. And here it is. On week number one, we're going to talk about transforming my life. We're talking about transforming our spiritual life. And if you remember, when we did this series called Find Your Way Back to God, we have those five different awakenings. On, on that Sunday of September 20th, we're going to take those five awakenings and really present them in a tight package with new content that's really what we think is going to be the best possible experience for people who are there for the very first time. And not only that, but then we're going to also challenge them say, hey, you have the opportunity, if you want, you can get in, and I think almost all of our campuses are doing this, you can get into a Finding Your Way Back to God small group. And we've got a whole bunch that are also doing alpha groups. And I think what we've done by, by September 20th, by delivering that, plus then this Finding Your Way Back to God groups, I think we give them this process where your friend, your family, your neighbor, your coworker, all of them can take the next step and find their way back to God. Because in every way as a church, I want us to make, be wise about every opportunity because, as it says, the days are evil. And again, here we go. This, I think this is true about our leadership. You can't take people where you are not willing to go. Leaders always go first. 
And if you want, if you want people to be generous, then we have to be generous. If you want people to, to serve, we, leaders have to go first and serve. If you want people in God's word, leaders have to go first and be in God's word. And if we want to see every one of our locations, see all kinds of brand new people show up for the very first time, find their way back to God, as leaders, we have to go first. So here, here one more time. And you're gonna, we're gonna, I think we're going to do this as a, as a church again tomorrow. Uh, when you, got, you should have got one of these when you came in. Go ahead and grab that. Would you grab that? I would love for you to grab that. Your, your, who's your five card? All right? And there's probably a pen near you. There should be a pen somewhere near you. And go ahead and just, and I've already, I've already got my names filled out here, but go ahead and just fill in those names. You probably did it last week, and you're going to get asked to do it again next week. But go ahead and fill in those names. People that are, that are relationally close to you, family members or friends, vocationally close, um, co-worker, close proximity. God's intentionally put you in close proximity in the neighborhood or next door. I want you to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to do something with this. Um, I got kind of a hunch. And when I say a hunch, that means uh, it may not, it's, <laughs> a hunch means it's not in the Bible, but it just might happen anyway. And here's my hunch. My hunch is this. When we get to heaven, I think God's going to ask us a couple questions. I think the first question he's going to say when we get there is, do you love me? And we're going to say, yes, I love you and I follow Jesus. And there's, he's going to welcome us with a huge old embrace. Big welcome. And we're going to walk into heaven. And I just got a hunch that maybe, I got a hunch that maybe God's going to say, hey, did you bring anybody with you? And it's not going to be a, pre, uh, it's not going to be a requirement to get in, but it's just kind of the heart of God. Hey, did you bring anybody with you? And I want to be able to say yes. A few weeks ago, um, I had a friend of mine. And I'll tell you what, when, when you have a friend of yours come with you, it doesn't just change the whole dynamic of how you experience church. You know what I'm talking about? When you have somebody come and they're there for the first time and you know it's all on the line, I mean, like you're rooting for every song, you're rooting for the greeter, you're going, come on, Dave, or, you know, whoever's teaching that week, and come on, be good this time, you know, right? <laughs> it changes, it does, the amen, right? It does. And I had a friend here who was here uh, a few weeks ago, first time, and, and they loved it. They loved it. I came again the next week, brought their son with them, loved it again. And that following week, I got a text from him, and he just said this. said, hey, Dave. And they said a few nice things about my kids because they know each other. And he said this. He said, I'm not sure when I'm going to be ready. Not quite yet, though. But at some point, I want to talk to you about my challenges of getting closer to God very soon. And you know what? That's a guy who's finding his way back to God. And I am determined, okay? I am determined. And I feel like the, the, the experience this summer with my next-door neighbor, I am determined that I will not take any day for granted. As it says in Ephesians, be very careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days, it's like a clock ticking, okay? The days are evil. And I hope someday I can stand before God and he says, do you love me? And I say, yes, I love you and I'm a follower of Jesus. He says, come on in. And then when he says, hey, did you bring anybody with you? You know what I hope? I hope there's just like this whole long line, you know? I'm like, yeah, I brought a whole party with me. Look at this. That's what I want. Let me, I want to challenge you in a couple different things, okay? Leaders, here we go. One, uh, take, out, take out your, uh, take out your uh, phone. Probably most of you got your phone in here with you. Eric already told you to post online, so I'm going to take that out. I want you to do this. I'm going to steal this from John Reinheimer, and I, maybe some of, your, some of your campus pastors had you do this last week. If, if you haven't done it yet, set your, set your alarm at 920. A.M. and P.M., okay? Go ahead and go do it right now. You can go ahead and do it. Set your alarm to 9.20. 9.20 is show up Sunday, but set your alarm to 9.20. You can just have it vibrate if you want. But 9.20, A.M. and P.M. And every time that it goes off, let that be a reminder, okay, to pray for these folks. Does that make sense? 9.20 on your phone. Here's a second challenge. All these have to do with prayer. On Monday, myself and, and a whole bunch of our staff Monday from noon to Tuesday at noon, we're going to kind of enter into a time of prayer and fasting. Okay? We're just going to we set the time of, the time of prayer and fasting where we're going to go without food if that's possible for you. And, uh, and every time we feel those hunger pangs, it's going to be a reminder, kind of like this alarm, to pray for those five people. Pray for those five people we're going to invite. Does that make sense? So Monday, I'd, I'd encourage you to join us on the day of prayer and fasting from Monday at noon to Tuesday at noon. 20, 24 hours, you're saying, you know what, I'm going to set aside something that's important to me for something that's even more important. And I'm going to pray for those folks every time I get hungry. 
But as we wrap up this leadership community, we're going to have a song. We're going to sing a song a little bit, Cornerstone. But I would love for you to do it right now. And you can do it however you want. If you want to get on your knees, you can get on your knees. If you want to just bow your head, you can bow your head. But I want us to have a time of just silence. And I want you to kind of just take a look at these five names. Maybe you have more than five. These, these are the people saying, every one of them, you know, saying, God, use me. Okay, use me to make the most of the opportunity. Me and this person, me and this person, me and this person, me and this person, me and this person. Let's just have a time of, of prayer right now before we enter into this song where you pray for those people. Okay, going to show up Sunday. Let's just silently pray right now.